Welcome back, another What's Next episode, the Next Advisory Podcast with Philip Smith, Luke Kimmies. Philip, also known as the Modern Day Encarta. Did you used to have that CD-ROM, sir? No. <laughs> I'm, got- I'm lost. I, I, it is good to be back. It is good to be back in front of the mic again, talking yep. to everyone. But There's some police outside. I am... Look, I do have a blank look on my face and I have <laughs> no idea what planet you're on. Well, when I was growing up, yep. I would put the CD-ROM into the computer called Encarta and I would oh, find the, the encyclopedia thing. Yeah. <laughs> Back in my day, it was a dude that would come around and try and sell you 15 volumes and then you'd subscribe to the annual model to get the annual update. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Back in the, uh, I think that was the late 80s. So the internet must have really disrupted those businesses, eh? Yeah, I can only think of a couple of times when uh, when they rocked around and never heard of them, and it wasn't that much longer, and the computer turned up. Really? Yeah. Yeah, and then, gee, the first time getting the internet, that was an exciting moment as well. I bet. Wow. Well, do you remember the first thing you searched? Was it about debt? Because that's, that, that's what this podcast is about. Look, uh, no, I, I imagine it would have been something accounting related, like what is, what is a debit? Yeah. <laughs> How do I find my credit? Yeah, because they're pretty easy to confuse your debit and your credit. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> they can be. Happens. Yeah, they, it does happen. Oh, well, today we are talking about debt and whether it is good or bad because I think there is literature and methodology and information on both sides that it is good and that it is bad. Some say use debt, others say not to use debt, and it can get a little bit confusing. So to make it even more confusing for the listeners out there, we thought we'd add our two cents worth. Yeah, it's always an interesting discussion and comes up with surprising frequency with clients Mm. about debt. And we've just finished a meeting with a client, actually, uh, talking about debt in their business and and the role that their bank plays. Yep. Um, Overall, our take would be debt is good good when used in the right way. Yeah, and tell me more, Phil, what is the right way to use debt? Oh, look, in in my case, it would be rolling the cue card three months interest-free to go and get all my groceries. (laughs) Okay. But then forgetting to pay for it at month four, five, and six. Oh, and what's your interest rate on that? Oh, should be high. 22.95. I love how they make those so high, but then still make it a 0.95 at the end of the rate. (laughs) Yep, Uh, that'll trip you up. No, the... For, and I think it's important to understand debt in a business sense yep. versus debt in a personal sense. Yep. And debt in the business sense, when used in the right way, provides leverage um, and naturally comes with tax benefits. Yeah. Uh, oh. In the private capacity, um, there's there's the trap that you can be using debt to fund short-term lifestyle stuff. Um, that maybe you just don't need. New holiday. Yeah, when potentially business is doing well, might go on holiday. You could save for the holiday instead or pay that tax bill. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. So a misuse of the funds, maybe not understanding how the cash is flowing through the, through the business and therefore the profit as well and then the tax implications of that mm. and then misspending the money thinking it's 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 theirs and it's, it's uh, tax – it's, it's already you've already paid your tax on that. We see that a bit, don't we? Yeah. Where people think, well, the money in the business bank account is the money they have to spend. Mm. And and they forget about uh, the IRD are going to want their share. Yeah. But look, we're we're not ones to judge. Nope. If if you want to use debt whatever way you want to, that's fine. But you need to understand the ultimate cash flow implication that that's going to have on your business, and therefore. Your personal finances. Yeah. Yeah. And I think another thing that we see a bit of is people naturally gravitate towards saying, oh, we need an overdraft. We need an overdraft. Mm. It's like the, the main product they think of as being the solution. But then... I think they probably do that because it's easy. Yeah. I wonder you know, what you that is. You can just fill out the paperwork off to the bank. Can you extend my overdraft? Or, yeah. oh, cash is a bit tight. I'll just get the bank to give me a temporary facility increase. Yeah. But so if we put a practical example, you might have somebody that's importing from China 
Yep. And then selling months later, but has to pay for the stock once they get it, right? Yeah. So typically if you're manufacturing offshore and you're importing, you're going to have to pay a deposit. Yep. Could fund, be up, fund that out of your cash. Could be up to 50%. Wow. Yeah, it's a lot of cash. And you're not going to sell that to recover your 50% for months. Months, yeah. Right. And then and then to get those goods landed and in your warehouse, you're going to have to pay the the balance of the 50%. So you've paid for the stock in full yeah. just to get it into your warehouse. And then you haven't even started selling it yet. No, nah, then you've got to get it to the retailer or to your end consumer. Somehow. Wow. So the key to that story is the answer isn't always to then go, well, we need an overdraft to get us through. It is what debt is the right debt to get me through that and that is where you need to speak to your bank my man like it yep that's yep. completely the right answer and in earlier podcasts if you haven't caught up um the relationship that a business owner needs to have with the key people around them the accountant obviously us um and the banker is so crucial yeah and it's important that the banker understands your business <clears throat> and importantly understands how cash flows through that business and what an accountantese geek speak would be the working capital cycle. The working capital cycle because a loan and an overdraft are merely two products that a bank has, but they may have hundreds of products, right? Yeah, just like McDonald's, it's not just your cheeseburger yeah. and Big Mac. Uh, you can go to McDonald's, get your McChicken, fillet fish. Yeah, milkshake. Yep, hot apple pie. Yep, definitely. Yep, that's Oreo McFlurry. A, oh, that's always a tasty treat. Caramel sauce on the bottom. And we of can't it. forget the chicken nuggets. Yeah, mm. of course. A lot like a bank, really. They've got a lot of those products as well. You can't always just dial them off the touchscreen menu, nor the drive drive through. But you will need to speak to your bank about them. But matching the debt with the right product, right? So different businesses have the same problems. Yeah, well, I guess same, I guess the challenge interest. that you're faced with. Yeah or the pain point, there will be a corresponding solution that a bank will potentially have. Yeah. So if you want to free up your debtors, for example, because okay. you're carrying a large debtors ledger. So that's people owe me money. I might, people yeah. owe you money, yes, accounts receivable. Well, why aren't they paying me? Yeah. And then and then what do I do? I go to the bank and say, You hey, could go to the bank because you might be carrying 650,000 of debtors. Yeah. And you're like, gee, I'd actually like to have that money in my account. I need to sleep Much sooner. So the banks have invoice finance where they will loan, in some cases, up to 80% of that debtors ledger, obviously subject to um, lending criteria. Yes. Your banks will lend. That will always catch you out. This the- podcast is brought to you by a consumer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dot org. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that, that's just one illustration. Um, you know, on the stock example we were talking about earlier, trade finance. Trade finance. A little thing, a yeah. little, little wee hack. Nice. Um, and you talked earlier on uh, matching the term of the debt to the asset that you're purchasing. So, so often we see people with cash in the bank and think, oh, you know, there's a there's a cheeky hundred grand sitting out there, so I'll go and buy myself a new Mercedes CLA 45 AMG. That that sounds. Is that the the hairdresser's version of the <laughs> I have heard from somewhere that that is the hairdresser's C63. Okay. Yeah, it's still a nice car. Yeah, well, I've read about that, I think. Mm, yeah. But you've got to take stepping stones in life to get to those ultimate C63s, and if the CLA45 AMG is it. So be it. So be it. Great car. So I'm at, I'm at the dealer. I'm like, You're at I the got dealer. 100. You've got 100 grand in your bank, and you think, you know what? I'm just going to write cash because the dealer's going to sell me the car for 90000 bucks. Yeah. I'm like, I still got 10 grand. Got That'll get me three litres of fuel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would <laughs> three actually. Three trips. Yeah. And and then you'll get, you know, you're a smart businessman, Luke, mm. and you'll go down the road uh, in your, your hairdresser's Merc. Yep. Get to get a haircut. The, yeah, with the windows down, the sunroof back, and, and blasting out, what, some Mariah Carey? Or, Definitely. Or, or Drake? Yeah. Yep. Maybe even some Elton John. Would I lie to you, baby? I really like that song too. That's Charles and Eddie, if you didn't know. Yeah. yeah. Nice, nice. That's good. Maybe we could save the serenading for later. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> but you've then, you know, you're, you're, you're a smart man and you're thinking, gee, I'd like to scale my business up yeah. and, and grow my revenue from, you know, a, a cool two and a half million to five million. Oh. And, and you think, oh, gee, I'm going to have to spend some money on some advertising and marketing and yep. 
and maybe some smarter accountants. Yeah, might hire those next guys from folks from next advisory center. Right, send them online. Yeah, hot too. Good looking fellas. Mm. Yep, been been everywhere online. And and then you realise you've only got ten grand left in the bank. Oh shit! I brought the Merc. Oh, I got the Merc though. So how are you going to pay them bills? Uh, Can you put those on QCard? I'm not sure. I will be. Able, I, might, I could extend my limit. Might get an overdraft. Could do <laughs> on the QCard front. Uh, you know, there's some people out there that perhaps could dial in and give us some advice. Yeah. But look, the point is, is that rather than going to the dealership and getting that ten grand discount on the car, you could look to go to the bank and get asset finance. Uh, you could have gone and get some finance through the, the dealer. Yeah, against the vehicle. Against the vehicle. Uh, the beauty about asset finance is if that's got a serial number, uh, the bank can take a direct security interest over it. And that would that potentially save them wanting to borrow, or sorry, secure against my property, my personal property, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. And because it's secured over the asset itself, uh, you'll more than likely get a better interest rate than you would funding it out of an overdraft. Wow, I see. Yeah, and then and and it's it's our advice is think then uh, plan then act yeah you know uh, plan for how you're going to structure the deal before executing on it because once you've executed it's pretty hard to then go three Undo months it. later down the track going oh gee I should have funded that a little bit differently I need to go to the bank and the bank's going to be going hmm mm. yeah one common a different deal common thing that we see might be like someone getting into business for the first time and they go right I need to borrow the money to buy this business or to buy this building to, to turn it into let's say a restaurant and then they do that and they get the deal across the line and then you go hey are you gonna what are you gonna spend on fit out and it's like oh I didn't didn't really think of, oh we're just we're just we're too far deep into it now we're just gonna we'll carry on we'll scratch around and get a bit of money here get a bit of money there and all of a sudden they're massively on the back foot if you preempt some of those things and say to the bank from the start hey this is the cost of the business here's the cost of the fit out this is this is the reality of what I'm gonna need to borrow um, then you don't get down the track like Phil says and then go hey we're we've run out of money we can't pay our creditors we can't that's people you owe money to. Uh, what what can we do? And they sit there thinking, well, we've just done a heap of lending for you. Why didn't we do it properly? So you almost need to think about the things that you're going to incur post just the one asset that you're buying, right? You know, yeah. you might go and buy the new car and then you realise, oh, I, I want to have this in a garage. Don't have a garage. Oh, yeah. Can you? you? You'd be down to the warehouse getting one of those bloody knock-up shade things. Yeah, with tarpaulin maybe. Yeah, yeah. for, for twenty nine ninety five Until you can afford to fund your, mm. get some borrowing for your garage. Or, you know, in a practical sense, for a business that might be buying a new digger and then they want it to be in a fully fenced off yard or we didn't actually, to, to get the insurance, it mm. needs to be locked up in a fully fenced off yard. Sorry, this doesn't qualify. Oh well, shit, now we've got to spend 10 grand on getting this upgraded so that the insurance, that, so that they'll insure it. Bang, where's your 10 grand going to come from? So, these are the sorts of extra level that we encourage people to think about so that they don't have to play backwards and, and sit on the back foot. Yep. Because it's going to do more damage than good mm. by not planning for it or sucking cash out of the business to pay for something now just because you think you've got the money available without thinking of the longer term implications. And and from what we see, the, the, the biggest one to suffer is uh, the tax man. Yeah. Money's sitting in the, the bank account and you think, oh, gee, I could go and spend this on this, that or something else and do it and then months later get a bill from their accountant and you go, oh, oh, I forgot I had to pay this. Yeah. And then you go, oh, where am I going to get the cash from? And you think back, oh, maybe I should have borrowed to buy – the the uh, the Merc. Yeah, I see. Or the digger. I think as a rule of thumb that I always, well, that I often sort of throw around around debt is that if you're using it to buy something that will help you generate income, eighty percent of the time, probably ninety five percent of the time, that's then good debt. Mm. If you're borrowing money for stupid shit, that's ninety nine percent of the time really dumb. So would you say uh, a business vehicle is generating income or not generating income? I think it will help you generate income. Mm. You then it's your then role as a business owner to figure out how you can use that to help you generate income or maybe add more time back into your day. How can you use it as a tool? So can you use it as a bit of an office 
uh, those sorts of things? Is, is, is he going? A perfect answer there, Luke. And yeah. I, I think uh, in high school or even university, that would get you a 10 out of 10. Yeah. Yeah. I was if I had some, I'd give you a gold star. Uh, well, can we get some? Because we're going to need some stationery. That would be a deductible expense. We wouldn't Zero need Zero owes a gold star. Yeah, they do. Mm. Shout out to Zero. Not sponsored this one, but uh, maybe in time. Well, debt is also the cheapest it's ever been since I've oh, since I've been born, Phil. Yeah, look, I think back to uh, the first house that uh, we bought. Yeah, in interest rates. That's not in, you and I, is it? Or because I can't remember that. <laughs> no, no, oh. no, 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 it's with my other partner. Oh, I see. Yeah, my wife. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm with you. Sorry, yeah, yeah, same page. Yeah. Yeah, same page. Uh, and uh, interest rates in those days were uh, eight nine percent. Wow. And and that was low in comparison to. Um, Interest rates in years gone by, where you you hear of uh, the boomers. Yeah, okay, I've heard that too. Yeah, about it. yeah. We'll, we'll, we won't throw it around too much, but uh, boomers will have anecdotal evidence that they used to pay interest rates of 12, 15, some may even say 20%. Wow. Mm. Yeah, no, look, I, I've never seen that in, in, on, on a statement to say it's true or not. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe it's just that boomer lifestyle, but. <laughs> Yeah, we are in uh, historically speaking uh, an incredibly low interest rate environment. Uh, yeah. The OCR official current, cash rate. Yeah, currently one percent. One percent. I'll write that down because mm. that is. You know the funny thing. Just to go on a tangent here, when I spent a lot of time accounting in Taranaki, the amount of economists that would come and you go and listen them speak, and they're all trying to predict the interest rate. Yeah. And all this stuff, and like they never got it right, and I was. Uh. I got to a point where I was like, why do I come to this stuff? Like, I'm literally sitting here going, what, well, don't actually think that you... The funny thing uh, about economists is they're really smart people who always get the answer wrong. Yeah. It's a weird job. They and predict, somebody's paying them for that shit. Yeah. <laughs> they predict what's going to happen, get it wrong, and then get to report on what has happened, and then give more predictions, but then get paid to get it wrong. It's real bizarre. Yeah, it's an interesting model, that one. Yeah. I think interest rates are going to be low for a I while. I think an investigation is warranted into that one. There's going to be people. <laughs> There's got to be an investigation into this. Yeah, there does. There needs to be some sort of investigation. But I think we're going to see low interest rates for a while. And I think as why, well. Why do you think there's going to be low interest rates for a while? Well, I think that it, the way it has gone, like we've been in a great economy, right? And oh, historically speaking, I, I I think we can't complain how good life has been. Nah, nah, there's not much to complain about. And if you want to make a dollar, you can go out there and make a dollar. Yeah, still rules apply. You have to put your head down, put the work in, hustle. Um, but I can't see a huge increase in interest rates all of a sudden when we've been slowly going backwards and they're continually. I I don't think that the the movement in the OCR, the official cash rate, is as effective mechanism to control the economy as it used to be. <laughs> so sorry, sorry to get into a little bit of uh, economics. Yeah, yeah. That is, whoa, you're coming in full noise there. You know, if with I, some economic debate. If I were to go it's back good. and and study one thing tomorrow, if I said well, you have to go back and study, I reckon dead set, I would just be straight into economics. Yeah, into the big E. Yeah. You know what? I was thinking the same thing yeah. last night. I really do love it for some reason. I yep. just think it's fascinating. There's just both sides to okay. Well, if this happens, what happens somewhere else in the economy? I quite like that side of it. The the, the supply, demand, and incentives. Yeah, and it just it, it's amazing the way the free market works. Yeah. Anyway, what we, I do what we it, digressed a little. Yeah, bit. we do, and that's just we just get excited. But what it's done for me with interest rates being low is challenged me to think, okay, maybe there's actually a huge opportunity there. Mm. If interest rates are this cheap and then you're a good business person or entrepreneur or whatever you want to term yourself, then this is a great time to take advantage of the of, of the fact that money is cheap. Like yeah. it is cheap to go and get money. And if you can get money cheap and then turn it into more money, this is the time that you want to be having a go at it. So we've got probably one of the biggest opportunities to be able to do that if you are a good business person. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, uh, totally right. Uh, debt, when used the right way in this low interest rate environment, will help free up your working capital, put cash into your business so you can scale and scale. Scale. If you want to, really quite quickly. Yeah. Um, but each business is unique, and I think the overall discussion is on debt that it's a good thing. In business, mm. yeah. If if used if used correctly, what about 
the tax deductibility. Are my mortgage repayments, are they tax deductible or is it just the interest? Your mortgage, is that on your rental property, mate? Which, yes, on my which, rental property. On your rental property. Yeah, some people ask that. Oh, my loan, are my loan payments, aren't, aren't they tax deductible? No, the loan payments are principal. Yeah, principal. So they're repaying the actual loan amount that you borrowed aren't tax deductible, but yeah. the interest that the bank will be charging you at whatever the current rate is are tax deductible. Yeah. yeah. So um, that interest component will come off your income and then you'll pay tax mm. on the balance. And that's yeah. the beauty of... of Tax deductible debt. Yeah. Mm. I've got a scenario I'll run you through real quickly. Yep. Hit me. I had a guy that we met with uh, a fair while ago. Yep. Let's use round figures. Mm-hmm. He collected money in advance. Do I advance. need a calculator? Nah. Nah. Let's just use, be real real rough. He collected money in advance. Yep. And he stored it in an account. Yep. And so let's say that was 100000 Mm-hmm. Over a year, at 5% in interest, he ended up with $5,000 of income, right? Interest income. Yep. By storing that. And then he had to pay tax on that because that's that's income. Yes. So he had to pay tax. And so then they were taking 33%. Yep. So a third of it was gone. 1500 And then Ish. he was left, yeah, with, with the rest. Yep. So I think that's 1667 of interest. So he might have been left with 3003 3, whatever. Yeah. I said to him, oh, do you have any debt? He's like, yeah, we've literally, we've just did it up to the eyeballs um, to buy this property. And I said, well, why don't you look at putting uh, – well, I was like, what's your interest rate? And I think, let's say, like it was it was a lot higher. It was about 4% higher than the interest he was making as income. Oh, so he had debt at, say, 9%. Let's say 9%. Yep. And I said, so why don't you ask the bank to set you up with an offset mortgage? Oh, yes. And put that a hundred grand instead of earning the five grand in income. Why don't you put it against that a million? You will only be charged interest on the nine hundred thousand. So at nine percent, he was paying nine thousand dollars out of his pocket as interest back to the bank. On a hundred thousand, he wouldn't make his five grand less the tax, but he would then only have to pay eight thousand one hundred dollars in interest. Yeah, and great idea was definitely in his favour. More tax efficient. But no, nah, 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 I don't. I don't think I'm going to do it. It's just, it's just all a little bit too hard for me to understand. I'm like, okay. So I think we still have that. that so despite that wonderful education piece that you invested in, he he couldn't commit. No, it's a real shame. It did yeah, broke my heart. Mm. It'll break so, mine too. Yeah. So how you have debt and then how you structure it is what I'm trying to illustrate here. Is is also important to think about too. If you have money sitting there making interest, great, but can you offset some of your current debt but then still have access to it should you need it for whatever, whether that be business or personal? Yeah, we had a similar case oh, a while back actually with a client that had uh, a, a bank overdraft and, and they were in overdraft but they were holding a, a bit of money in a savings account. Yeah. And we said to them, why? What's the reason for holding cash in a savings account when you're incurring an interest cost on the other side? Yeah, and uh, they hadn't considered it, so they promptly moved the cash that was in the uh, interest earning account, earning sweet FA in, in, in reality, mm. uh, over to their to their OD to clear that to pay less interest. Yeah, mm. yeah. Well, yeah. This guy, it's a, it's a huge difference for what it was going to save him. You know, going from ninety thousand dollars of interest down to eighty one thousand. Yeah, and using you know ten, eleven thousand dollars back in your yeah, as if that's what the numbers are. Yeah, um, yeah. What can you do with that? Yep. Imagine putting ten grand on an advertising campaign. Bingo. Scale. <laughs> so roof. We need to be thinking smarter, New Zealand out there, about how we are using debt and how we are uh, offsetting it and how um, we're going to going forward. But obviously, at the moment, with debt being so cheap, it does present a number of opportunities. I guess one thing that I wrote down to to ask you about here, Phil, is mm. debt compounding. And we see this with the IRD where yes. people may owe money for a prior tax year and then they get caught behind and then all of a sudden the interest goes on top of that, then interest on top of the interest, then late payment penalties, and it just skyrockets really quickly. Eh? And it, it's still... Uh, you want to know the easy answer to that? What is it? Just pay your tax on time. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Pay your tax on time. But it's true though, right? Yeah. What do you usually say? Pay current year tax. With current year cash, yeah, yeah, and and if 
if your business is cyclical in that your working capital uh, cycle is kind of out of whack a little bit with when you need to be paying tax, you can change your balance date, which will change the dates that you need to pay tax. Okay. Yep. Um, and you could potentially look to go to the bank and make sure that your facilities that you've got match your cash flow cycle. Yeah, so nice. you can pay your tax. Yeah. Mm. Mm. But your accountant, I think, should be close enough to your business that they are advising you of what your likely total tax bill is for the year so that you can plan and set aside the cash so it's not a surprise for when the tax return is actually done after balance date yeah. rather than just relying on what IRD say that you need to pay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you yeah. don't. You, no one likes a tax surprise. We don't like tax surprise. No, no, that's right. Our, that's one of the things that clients hate the most, right? Being mm. surprised by a, a huge amount of tax or an amount of tax. So, mm. and I think when you're going down the the pathway of just back on the the bank debt discussion, and you were talking about interest rate, and we're such a low interest rate environment at the moment, that's all well and good, and it's pretty easy to compare um, a pink bank to an orange bank, and Go well. One's offering four point eight percent. The other one's offering four point seven percent. Yeah. Go. Oh, you know what? I'm an interest rate shopper, so I'll do the four point seven percent. I think there's some other things that are overlooked. Yeah. When when getting into bed with the bank, mm. um, a couple of the key things that uh, spring to mind is what's the level of security that the banks are asking for. Yeah. So you so know, is is, is, is the lower interest rate bank asking for more security? Is is the higher one, um, you know, just got a personal guarantee, but you don't have to put your house on the line. Yeah. You know, there's that type of thing to think about. Uh, there's the relationship that the bank can offer as well. Yeah. You know, whilst Pink Bank might be cheaper by 0.1%, Orange Bank actually might do you a blooming good relationship yeah. and look after you and understand you because they might be a little bit more sophisticated. Yeah. Then beyond the security and the relationship stuff, think about the um, – any covenants that might be in the bank loan documents. So that might be the requirement to provide any type of regular reporting to the bank, monthly to monthly type stuff. And then financial covenants. So banks might st- sneak in there or stick in. I don't, shouldn't say sneak because they make the customer aware, surely. Um, that there might be key ratios that they need to meet in terms of uh, working capital ratios. Um, or current asset ratios and uh, interest cover ratios and debt to equity ratios, all in yeah. account and ease, of course. Uh, but that's important that you involve your accountant in it and get the right advice before signing on the dotted line. And are they wanting those because they're just making sure that your business is going to be operating effectively and financially uh, not too risky for them throughout the period that they've given you the debt for? Yep. I see. Yep, just to make sure that it's all running as it should while you've got the debt and the bank. Uh, it's a way of the bank reducing their risk. So if you breach your covenants, what do they do? Or you'll probably breach. get a phone call. Yeah. And uh, I, most banks, in the experience that I've seen where a company has uh, breached the covenants, the financial covenants, uh, they'll work with the customer uh, and help them try and get on the right side. Um, but it's uh, it's a slippery slope down if you're going to keep breaching them and then uh, end up defaulting. That's yeah. not somewhere you want to be. Yeah, sounds mm. pretty scary. Yeah, I'd imagine that if you're defaulting on your loan repayments, there's probably much bigger issues. Yeah. Well, we're going to do a podcast at some stage on what to do if you have a lot of debt and if you start to feel like you've got too much debt. So we'll probably drag in someone that's a specialist in that area and get them to talk us through mm. uh, what to do. So I imagine most people in that case would be hoping for uh, six lucky numbers and a Powerball. Yeah, yeah. So when we do that, we will also touch on the things to do to avoid getting into that position. So stay tuned, as we say, for that podcast um, because there will be a lot to learn and there'll be information in there that you can share with people that come to you with a problem of i got a lot of debt and I'm, I'm struggling to sleep at night. So <clears throat> that will be a very, very educational one. Much like this has been, Phil, thank you for pulling um, that CD-ROM out in those early days and implanting it into your head, which you're now reteaching the people. I'm sure they're very appreciative. That has been good. Oh, the debt, the good, the bad, and the ugly. We've had a bit of ugly from us. Thank you, Phil. 
We're done. Thanks, Luke.